welcome to the Haslam Victory Fredericksburg. Whether you are joining us virtually or in person, we are grateful that you are worshiping with us today. Victory Nation, join our pastor each Monday at 6 a.m. for the Victory Corporate Prayer via our Facebook Members Only page. Also, join us for Mana on Monday via our Facebook Members Only page where our pastors will share a word of thought with us and meditate on as we pause to pray. And then during the week, pause to pray individually at noon. Victory Nation, this is a reminder that there will be no Bible study in the month of August. Please take this time to study on your own as well as rest, rejuvenate, and relax. Everyone, mark your calendars for Sunday, September the 12th. We will be celebrating our soft launch and Founders Day recognition. HOB College students, please join our pastors virtually on Friday, September the 17th at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. Women of HOB, Please join our co-pastor virtually for our Woman Focus Bible Study on Thursday, September the 23rd at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. Men of HOV, mark your calendar to join our pastor on Sunday, September the 26th at 6 p.m. for our virtual men's gathering on Facebook Live. Did you know that you can become a virtual partner of HOV? If you are not in the local area, or aren't able to physically worship with us and desire to be a partner of HOV, please inbox us or send an email to admin at HOV at first. Our pastors would like to take the time to thank you for your financial commitment to HOV. Your giving helps us to do great ministry. Victory Nation, invite someone to church with you. They can share with us virtually or attend our weekly in-person service. We will continue our social distancing practices to include wearing a mask and checking temperature to ensure everyone's safety while we worship. Be sure to keep up with our upcoming events, our latest messages, sermons, and much more by visiting our HOB social media platforms. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to the House of Victory YouTube channel, follow House of Victory Fredericksburg on Instagram, like us on our Facebook page at House of Victory Fredericksburg and visit our website at houseofvictoryfredericksburg.org. Please join us for worship service virtually or in person every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. May God bless you and continue to walk in victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Let's bless the name of the Lord.
Let us look to the Lord. Yes. Father, we thank you. We praise you right now, God, for being God all by yourself. For looking after us, God, each and every day. Just for waking us up this morning, God, we thank you. For if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? We humble ourselves before you, God, knowing that our help cometh from the Lord. That everything, God, everything we possess, it comes from you, Lord. And we thank you now, God. Be with our pastors, dear God. As they come forth and bring the word of God. Let, us, let our ears hear, God, what thus saith the Lord. And let our hearts receive it. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you now, God, with all that's going on in the world, God, that we can look to you, God, as being our help. And we thank you now, God. Be with our young people, Father, as they prepare themselves, dear God, to go back to school. Put your arm of protection around them, Lord. That we give you all the glory, all the praise, God. It all belongs to you, God. And we thank you now, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
as your testimony this morning. Come on, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Come on, look at somebody around you. Tell them, I'm so glad to see you in church today. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, if you're excited about being in the house of the Lord, if you're excited about being in worship this morning, come on, can you give God a praise? Come on, even if you're sharing with us virtually, come on, give God a praise. Even on the screen, we thank and we honor God. Hallelujah. Come on, Sister Ellen, give God a praise. Sister Liz, come on, give God a praise. Sister Glasgow. Come on, give God a praise. Sister Ashley, come on, give God a praise. Sister Shirley, Sister Pinky, come on, Sister Jacqueline, come on, Sister Jackie Waldo, come on. For the presence of God in this place, hallelujah. How many of you know that God has been good to us, that he smiled on us one more time? You know, you know, smile, God's smile is wrapped up in a word called mercy. Y'all hear me? God's smile is wrapped up in a word called mercy. And so God has given us brand new mercies. That means the Lord has smiled on us. And for that, I am so thankful to God. Come on, let's give God a praise in the building. We welcome you to worship. The God we serve is an awesome God. He's a mighty God. He's a good God. And we thank God for God. Listen, so glad to have you all in worship today. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God bless you, Sister Tika. Glad to see you in the house. Sister Tiffany, God bless you in the Bellamy clan. We are so grateful for God and his goodness towards us. How y'all doing this morning? Everybody's doing well. Come on, if you're happy and you know it, somebody clap your hands. And give God a praise. Hallelujah. I am so grateful to God that God has been keeping us yet while we've been traveling, moving around, and doing whatever it is that we have been doing during these warm days, these warm weeks, these summer months. The Lord has been faithful to us, and we're grateful, and we're glad to be back in the house. We were virtual last week. Um, Deacon Stan was virtual last week. Listen, all, uh, many of us were virtual last week, but isn't it good that we still took time to be in worship? And I'm telling you, it was a worship experience indeed. I think, listen, I'm telling you, Sister Renee, Sister Redeemer, the music team, Minister Faye did a wonderful job in the Lord, didn't it? I am so grateful for them. And what a wonderful and mighty word the Lord gave us on last week. And I am so excited. Listen, I wish I could sing. I, 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 I wish I would have had my, my little hot tea with the honey in it this moring so I could take you and help me and take y'all take y'all somewhere. But but I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Unless I feel it. If I really feel it, Sister Renee, I'm telling you, I, I'm off for of vacation. They, they, they let me rest a little a little while, Brother Osberg, but I, I don't know if I rested that, that much to come in and try something that I know I don't normally do. But if I could say, stay in my leg. Okay, all right. All right. Amen. I'm just saying, you ought to have a song. You ought to have a song in your spirit. I'll take them home. I, I, I'll take them back, Keith. They, they, they play with the wrong one. Mother, Mother Dolores, they play with the wrong one. <laughs> Trouble in my way. <laughs> ah, oh, oh, okay, okay. See, we got some young. See, I wish y'all, I wish y'all virtual crew could, could see our young just going, going in and out here. I have to cry some. <laughs>
DJ, you trying to start something. You ain't trying to start something over there. See, sometimes you just give me a beat, you just got to rock it and just stick it in your spirit.
So my prayer for you is that you remember that God has called you to be a leader and not a follower. He has called you to be a trendsetter and not a conformer. You remember God, and God is watching. Don't disappoint. Don't shame your parents. Don't shame God. Certainly, as Mike, as you transition, my heart is, is heavy, but I, but I believe that what we have deposited in you remains. What we have deposited, what God has put in you remains. Remember your name. There's power in your name. There's a prophetic anointing over your name. Don't get, don't, don't get caught up in the, the liberty that you think you have. Because your life does not belong to you. Your life belongs to God. He's the one who gave you breath. And so you can't do what you want to do when you know your life doesn't belong to you. So y'all pray for us, Mark. Pray for me and Sister Tiffany as our children begin to transition into uh, this new phase, this new chapter of life. I believe God, I trust God completely and totally. And I'm still a mom, I'm still human. And I know how to get in the car and show up if I need to, if I sense something that's right. I don't have a problem with just popping up. But we thank God, it's, listen, we came to praise him and lift him up, amen. Right, Michael, we gonna bless him, because he's a big God. He's a big God. Yes, he is, he's a big God. And listen. My wife and I, we were talking about our baby girl going away to college. And there was a song that came in my spirit that the Lord put in my spirit. Glory, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs>
that's the truth, amen, because God has been great to us. He's been such a wonderful and amazing blessing to our lives. Listen, this is the portion of our worship where we give God his tithe, his offering. If you're sharing with us today, we don't require it to give, but we know that the word of God challenges us to trust God, even with that that God has blessed us with. And I want to thank you, co-pastor and myself. We want to thank you for all of those who trust God, who have been obedient. Come on, give God a, a, a praise, because we've been able to do some amazing things. And we have not stopped doing ministry because we're facing uh, great opportunity and we're going with God is shifting us to a greater level. He's doing some amazing things in our midst and we're grateful for that. But we still, we still and will continue to operate as the church. And I believe that a church is most impactful when we can demonstrate the love, the grace, and the provision of the Lord. Y'all hear me? He said, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was naked, did you clothe me? How in the world can we be a church and yet don't provide the need, meet needs of the people? And so one of my greatest inspirations is that I always say to myself, if House of Victory Fredericksburg Church were to be removed or taken away or dissolved, would the community be impacted in a negative way? And I can honestly say yes because we, we do a lot to help a lot of people. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? We do a lot to help a lot of people. Listen, there's no one that we can honestly say that came to us that the Lord led us to help that we did not help. As a matter of fact, we have done some amazing things even without the asking of help. When we saw a need, we met a need because we're that kind of ministry. Our outreach and reach ministry is one of our strongest and, and vibrant ministries here. And it's because I mean, it's the heart of God, it's the heart of your pastor, it's the heart of the leaders that we put in place to carry out the vision and the work of the Lord. And so we're grateful. It was a couple of weeks that the Hope House, that houses uh, displaced families when their stove broke down because that's how the families eat. They have to prepare their own meals. They have, a, they have shelter. They have uh, a room where they, they have a kitchen where they can have some normal seat. Just imagine if you didn't have a kitchen and you, you had to go out for every meal and try to figure it out. But the, the stove went out in one of the houses. And the first people they called was House of Victory Fredericksburg Church. Y'all hear me? It's really good to be high on the list that God trusts us to be a distribution center. And right away, we were able to meet the need because we're that kind of church. Even with bereaved families right here, we fed families without question, without request, because that's the heart of this ministry. And I'm grateful that God continues to bless us. God gives seed yeah. to the soul. Did y'all hear what I said? And so we expect seed because we sow seed. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And so I would admonish you to try God and your giving and your soul. Trust Him if you can't trust God with money. How in the world can you trust Him with your life? Because your life is more valuable than money. Y'all know that, right? Amen. And so when you learn how to conquer that, when you learn how to operate in that principle, God does something that blesses you on a greater level. Come on, this is our portion of worship where we give God his tithe, his offering. If you're sharing in person, why don't you stand on your feet? If you're sharing virtually, you can go to all of the giving apparatuses that we have. You can go to the cash app to our give with five. You can share them. Come on, let's lift up God's tithe, his offering. God, we're grateful for being absolutely awesome in all of your ways. We thank you for being so amazing. We bless your name and we honor you for giving seed to the soul. God, thank you for looking past every one of our faults 
and meeting every one of our needs. Thank you for blessing this place we call House of Victory Fredericksburg Church. Thank you for not only blessing us, but making us a blessing. God, I pray that you would bless the heart and the hands that trust you in their giving. Pray that you would bless them individually and then bless their household. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would meet every need and that you would allow their territory to expand. Allow their cup to run over. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. Nothing broken. God, we believe that all things come of thee. And that we're just giving back to you that which you've already blessed us with. So breathe on it now. Take our two fish, our five loaves. Increase it and feed many in Jesus' name. Come on and give the Lord a hand praise in this place. Come on if you love him and you trust him. Come on and give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, praise team. I'm going to leave y'all alone. I'm going to let, let y'all let the professionals go back to work. Come on, can we give our music team a hand praise? We thank God and we honor God for them. Amen.
verse 6. And we find these words. For I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, the sons of Jacob are not consumed. Somebody say amen. amen. For I am the Lord. I change not. And because of that, you, my people, are not consumed. I am God all by myself. I always have been. I always will be. And because of that, because you belong to me, you will not be overtaken, consumed, or done away with. Somebody give God a praise for the word of God. Listen, real briefly, I want to share with you from from the thought when the challenge of change meets character of Christ. When the challenge of change, Brother Aiden, meets the character of Christ, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'll try not to keep you very long. Big wrong Brothers and sisters, today, I would like to talk to you about change. Now, before we become extremely uncomfortable and sidetracked by something more appetizing and our wandering thoughts, let me tell you part of my motivation and inspiration for wanting to do so. I want to talk about change because change is inevitable. Yes, change is fated, predictable, and inescapable. Regardless of who we are, none of us can evade change. Change happens. It happens to the best of us and to the worst of us. As a matter of fact, if you went to sleep last night and woke up in this brand new day, you have experienced change. Even if you didn't go to sleep yesterday, but you crossed over to this new day, you, my friend, have experienced change. Change is the shift, the transforming, the different that has been displayed sometimes by invite, but often uninvited, unannounced, and unapproved. And here lies the problem. Change can be acceptable if it is first approved and endorsed by us. But that's not the way that change happens most of the time. I was talking to a few of our members that had experienced loss. And the one commonality that reared its head in each conversation was that they would have to get used to the new norm or change of not being able to talk or spend time with their loved one. And I knew that feeling all too well. As a matter of fact, it was exactly two years ago today that God called my mother home. And I had to deal with the challenge of change. 
The challenge of not being able to pick up the phone and hear her voice on the other end. The challenge of not being able to walk in her home unexpected and unannounced and surprise her. The challenge, Mother Burns, of not being able to sit alongside her bed and tell her my next big vision and dream. Change is a part of life. The pre-Socratic philosophical, uh, philosophical, 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 God, thank you, thank you, Dominique. Dominique laughing at me. Said this. Heraclitus said this. He said that there is nothing permanent except change. Can I say that again? The philosophic mind of Heraclitus says that there is nothing permanent except change. Friends, please understand this. Change will continue to be a fixture in our lives. Most of us don't like change because change has the ingredients and the propensity to challenge all of us. When in fact the Bible suggests that change will happen and change is supposed to happen. Y'all don't believe me? At Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, it says this, to everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven. Now one thing you must know about seasons and time is that they change. Seasons change. And time changes. And frequently when they change, they change situations, they change people, and they change conditions. There is a time to be born. And then a time comes that changes that and it's a time to die. There's a time to plant. And then the time comes and it changes that and there's a time to pluck up that which has been planted. There's a time to kill. Then there is a time that changes and there is a time to heal. There's a change that brings about a breakdown and there's a change that brings about a buildup. Every time we look at the news, you know what we're listening to? We're listening to change. Change in who got traded to another team. Change in who child got murdered just while playing at the playground. Change about the devastation in Haiti. Change and, uh, with the takeover in Afghanistan. So let's be honest, change can test us. I wish I had a witness in here. Change can challenge us. And the only way that I know how to remedy the challenge of change is to put it up against the character of Christ. I wish somebody say amen. Because the character of Christ is consistent. The character of Christ is constant. The character of Christ is continuous. As a matter of fact, the psalmist said in Psalm 78, verse 35, and they remembered that God was their rock. Lord, have mercy. We have to remember that God is our mainstay. That God is the thing that is solid and stable. I'm feeling the help. That God is the one thing that never, ever changes. I, I wish I had somebody that would be honest enough to point at somebody near you and say, one thing I do know is that God never changes, that, that God is stable, that God is not schizophrenic, that he is consistent, that he is constant, that he is the same God, that he never fluctuates, that God is a rock. Look at somebody and say, God is my rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, God is my rock. In other words, God is the only thing stable or nothing in my life that I can stand on. God is the only thing that never changes. God is the only thing that's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So in a world that we're living in that constantly changes, can I tell you that when you want to deal with the challenge of 
change. You have to put it up against the character of Christ. The character of Christ is consistent. The character of Christ is what it is and it ain't changing. The character of Christ loves you today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Look at somebody and say, I'm so glad that the God I serve is a constant God and that he never changes. As a matter of fact, he loves me so much that no matter what I do, he said he'll never leave me, never forsake me. I'm talking about a God that's a rock. I'm talking about a God that was with me when I had money. A God that was with me when I didn't work two nickels together. A God that was with me when I was in my best work. A God that was with me when I was on my sick bed. I'm so glad that the Bible reminds us that he is our rock. The word of God said, and they remembered that God was the only constant thing that they could really count on and depend on. Can I be honest with you? No matter who you are, you will let somebody down. I wish I had some honest people. No matter who you love the most, they will disappoint you sometimes. No matter how spiritual you are, you will, I will, we will miss the mark. But aren't you glad that the God we serve is a God that's the same? All the time. We have to remember that God is our mainstay. That God is the thing that's solid. He's the thing that's stable. God is the one thing that never changes. Malachi 3 and 6 says that God says, I am the Lord. Thy God. And I don't change. No matter what goes on around you. I don't change. I am who I always was and will be who I always am. Did y'all hear me? That I don't get more powerful as time goes on. I don't increase nor do I decrease. I don't diminish because I am God. I'm just as strong today as I've ever been. I'm just as gifted today as I've ever been. I'm just as, uh, um, um, I'm Jehovah Jireh today and tomorrow as I was yesterday. In other words, if I met your need on yesterday, what makes you think I can't meet your need today and tomorrow? I don't change. If, if God has ever done anything for anybody, God just stood me up this morning to let you know that even though things may be happening around you, even though things may be changing around you, the one constant that we have in our lives is God, and God does not change. So we must learn how to take the challenges of change and put it up against the character of God. And when we put the character of Christ up against the challenge of change, we find ourselves handling the test that unwelcome change brings about. Today, I, I want to teach more from a topical stance than an expository stance. If we go to John 11, and you write this down, go there in your quiet meditative time. You'll find that there are two sisters. And in John 11, verse 19, it says this, And many of the Jews came to Mount Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Let me put it in layman terms Great. to you. And many people came to Martha and Mary to comfort them because change had taken place in their life. A change where their brother is no more. And verse 20 says, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, she went and she met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Mary unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. And Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. So just 
for the next few minutes, and I promise I won't keep you long today. I want to talk to you about what happens or what needs to take place when the challenge of change comes against the character of Christ. You see it in the text. And the Jews came to Mary and Martha to comfort them because they were going through a change. First thing I want to talk to you about is that you can always depend on the fact that life will bring about change. And change is not always a bad thing. Let me tell you what change can do. Change is not always against you, but change and its greatest pain can be for you. Did y'all hear what I said? Change is not necessarily against you, but change can sometimes happen for you. Let me say that one more time. Change doesn't happen to you. Change happens for you. Let me say this for the people that didn't understand what I said the first time I tried to say it. Change oftentimes does not happen to you, but change happens for you. Come on, let's be honest. If it weren't for the change that has taken place in our life. We wouldn't be where we are. We wouldn't know what we know. We wouldn't be able to do what we do. It was because of change that many of us were developed. It was because of change that many of us have were, were able to go to another level. And most people don't like change because change challenges us to do something different. Y'all hear what I said? It, it change requires us, even if you know the change is beneficial, even if you know within the change that something has to take place in order for you to go to another level, in order for you to expand, in order for things to be better, you resist change because everybody is challenged by change. I promise you that when the pandemic hit, many of us and I say many of us are talking about the church. We're challenged by the change. What do we do? Do we continue to have service? Do we operate in faith? Do we continue to worship, come together, call the people together? Because if we don't, then they'll say we don't have faith. And if we do, then they'll say that we're not wise. What do we do? We're challenged by the change. But when you put the change and the challenges of change up against the character of Christ, it helps give you direction, it helps give you guidance, it helps give you understanding as to what it is that you're dealing with. In my life right now, and I'm just talking to you today, the, the more I live, the more I understand that change will take place. And then when I'm challenged by the change, I always put the change up against the character of Christ. What is Christ saying? What is Christ doing? What is Christ wanting to do in me, for me? What is he trying to expose me to? In the text, there's a few things I want you to know that happens when the character of Christ comes up against the challenge of change. We see it in the text. First, the character of Christ always reveals himself in the midst of change. I wish I had a witness. The Bible said that Jesus showed up while they were going through this challenge of change, this difficult season, that he came and he showed up. Now, this is what I want to deal with for a little while, and I promise you I'm going to let you go, Christian. I promise. The Bible says that the sister said to Jesus, Lord, if you would have been here, 
this change wouldn't have happened. Let me tell you something about the character of Christ as it pertains to the challenges of change. God doesn't have to stop something from happening to change what happened. Y'all hear me? God doesn't have to stop every negative thing in our lives in order to change some of the things in our lives. Martha said, Lord, if you would have been here, I wouldn't have this challenge of dealing with the change that has just taken place in my life. Lord, if you would have been here, you could have stopped it. Lord, if you would have been here, I wouldn't be weeping. Lord, if you wouldn't have, if you would have been here, we wouldn't have had to bury my loved one. Lord, if you would have just been here, I wouldn't have to deal with the challenge of change if I would have had your presence be made known beforehand. But something we all must understand about the presence of God is that the presence of God is not only enough to, to stop it, but it is powerful enough to reverse it. Let me say that again. The presence of God can resist trouble, but the presence of God can also restore trouble. It can also change, change. Y'all don't believe me? It's peppered throughout the Bible. Y'all don't believe me? It's peppered throughout the congregation. Y'all don't believe me? It's peppered throughout our virtual space. Many of us have gone through things, and if God would have stopped it, we would have never known who God really was or what God could really do. So God sometimes has to show his presence in a greater way after we've been challenged with the challenge. After we've lost the job. After the divorce, after the friends walk away, after they put rumors out on you, after you lose a loved one, the presence of God can show up and challenge your challenge with change. Got to understand the significance of the presence of God. That's one thing I want to tell you. The other thing I want to tell you is that you have to be able to understand the significance of the purpose of God. When you're challenged by change. Why would God allow this to take place? Now I do firmly believe that God does not create all of the stuff, the trouble we go through. But I do believe that God allows what we go through. And because God allows it, there must be a purpose behind what it is that God is allowing you to go through. I wish I was in preach mode this morning because I would stop right there and tell you that some of y'all don't know that the challenge of the change that has taken place in your life is for a greater purpose. It's for a bigger picture. It's for a, a, a more significant thing than you would ever understand at the present time. It's the challenge of change that puts you into connection with the character of Christ that exposes the purpose of why you're going through what you're going through. I don't know why it happened that way. I don't know why the job shut down. I, I don't know why that person left me. I don't know why that person broke my heart. I don't know why that happened. It must be because there's a greater purpose. There is a greater exposure of the eternal that he wants to put in front of us. Y'all don't believe me? It's in the text. The Bible says that Martha said, Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But even now, I know that whatsoever you ask of God, God will give it to you. Because you understand the will, the greater purpose. You understand what it is that God is doing 
in the midst of this change that I am experiencing right now. But I know even if you ask now, and look at this, Jesus said, your brother shall live again. What he says is that let me expose you to something. I know that your brother died, and I know that you're experiencing the challenge of change. I know that this season is a rough season for you, but can I let you know something? That I have a purpose that I am trying to demonstrate to you. I'm trying to show you that I can take the worst of the worst and make it the best of the best. I'm trying to tell you that I can take what's dead and make it live again. I'm trying to tell you that I'm the kind of God that has the purpose and the power to do what it is that will blow your mind to the place you understand that I am bigger than any challenge that change could ever bring your way. He says, that brother shall rise again. You gotta understand, a challenge of change comes if you put it up against the character of Christ. The character of Christ will expose his presence. It will expose his purpose. Because he was trying to show them that I am more than who y'all think I am. You've only had a small glimpse of what I can really do. And I had to allow this change to take place so you can be challenged by it. And in the challenge of this change, you will come to understand that I am more than what you ever thought I was. In other words, he was exposing himself as the resurrection. He was trying to let them know that there's a purpose. I'm not trying to let you get the full understanding of resurrection as it pertains to when that last day. He says, I'm trying to let you know that I am, that resurrection is a person, and I am that person, that I am the resurrection, that I am the need meter, whatever it is that you're going through, that change brings about, I am. The answer to the challenge of change that's going on in your life. Unless I keep it too long, the other thing that you have to understand about God is that when you're going through the challenge of change, that it all works together for your good. I want to just put this out there that those of us who are being challenged in this season because of change. It's all working for the purpose and the plan and the positivity of those of us who love God, who have been called according to his purpose and to his plan. The change will not kill you. The change will not destroy you. The change will not allow you to be overwhelmed. The change is what you have to learn how to embrace and put it up against the character of God. You know what I said to you today? All I said to you today is that whatever you're going through, put it up against God and see how God stands up against it. See how the constant, the consistent, the rock stands up against all of the stuff that's going on in the world. See how God is always faithful. God is always on top of things. God will never leave nor forsake us. That he is the one thing that never, ever changes. That's my assignment to remind you that there's a purpose, there's a plan, there's power, and it's because of his presence that whatever changes you're challenged by in this season. 
is something greater. And God is exposing it. I don't always know, can't always figure it out real clearly. But the more I talk to God, the more I stay in his presence, the more I let him know I believe him, the more he exposes himself, the more he shows and reveals the purpose, the more he extends his power, the more I can deal with the challenges of whatever changes are taking place in my life. I'm shifting. Today is such an awkward day for me. As many of you know, I'm stepping down as pastor resigning from the Culpeper site today and I'm dealing with the challenge of change because I'm stepping out in a season where there is no turmoil. There is nobody trying to run the pastor out of the church. I don't know how some of those churches. There is no disconnect. It's just that God. then I remember his presence and I remember his purpose and I remember his plan and I remember his power and I remember that God is trying to reveal himself in a whole different way than what I've ever known him before and sometimes let me say this sometimes the norm stifle our growth and our understanding and God sometimes the easiest stuff that you can do with your eyes closed sometimes the stuff that you can handle with one arm behind your back doesn't really expose you to a greater level of God and so sometimes the challenge of change has to come where you have to say, I got to call on God for this one. I'm going to need God to do this. I, I ain't trusting nobody. But I got to hear what God is saying. I got to know what God is doing. I got to cry on to God like never before. You got to learn how to put the challenge of change up against the character of Christ. And see what it is that God is exposing and revealing to you regarding what it is that's taking place in your life. I'm done, but it was my assignment to speak to those of us who are being challenged by change. And if you're here today and you have been challenged by change, you feel that. You're in a place where change has taken place in your life and been pushing you to a place where you know you got to go to God. You have to reach out to, to Christ. If you're here today, if you're sharing with us online, it's our hope that you would come standing all over the building while you're on your feet. Maybe there's someone here today. If you don't have a church home, if you don't have a place where you can learn and be exposed to the character of God through teaching, preaching, relationship with the saints, this is your moment, this is your time. Why don't you go? Hallelujah. Listen up. I tried my best not to yell at you today, not to get loud. I just wanted to put it out there to you today that I understand. Because y'all been calling me, y'all been texting me, and telling me about the challenges of change that's taking place in your life. 
and I encourage you to put it up against the character of Christ because that never changes that remains the same got a text early this morning about one of our young men today is his birthday brother Rashard and as many of you know he is a professional athlete playing basketball overseas and in the arena that they were playing in apparently <laughs> they didn't like his team or they like the players on his team so somebody decided to blow up or catch on fire with all of the teammates' cars. But he had gotten out of there before that happened. I'm trying to tell you, God is a prayer to God. Y'all don't know, that's why we go hard in the pain. We cover our eyes. Because we know that things happen, things change all the time around us, and we know we need Christ, his presence, to resist or either to restore. Maybe you're here and you're saying, I'm going through some stuff, Pastor, and I just don't know what else to do. It's change after change in my life, and I just feel like I'm being bombarded. This is your moment. This is your time. Hallelujah. Listen, we got to go. But I want to pray for those of you who are being challenged by change. And I promise I won't keep him on, even on the screen. If you're sharing and you know that you're being challenged by some things. Thank you for your honesty, sister. That's why I had to do it this way today because I want this to be an authentic moment. I want you to know that you don't have to fight this thing by yourself. That you've been trying to deal with the challenge of the change. You've been tested by it. God is saying, put it up against my character. And see who's going to come out on top. Come on, don't you miss this moment. We don't have to know your business to stand in agreement with you. But if you know you're in a place and a time and a season that a circumstance that you've been challenged by. We want, we want to pray with you and for you. Come on, let's pray. Hallelujah. That's right. Hug your mother. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. Because even if you don't show up when we think you should, even when you don't show up how we think you should, we know that you will show up. We know that your presence will be made known. We know that you are the Lord our God and you change not and because you change not and we are your people we will not be consumed we stand on that word that the challenges of what's going on in our lives the stuff that's shifting the stuff that seems like it's all out of whack it will not overwhelm us. I believe as we stand in agreement with these sisters, with those who may be worshiping with us virtually, that your character is still faithful. Your character is still powerful. Your character is still need meter. Your character is that you're still a healer. Your character is that you're still a provider. And so God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Touch these sisters. Touch all of us. We've been challenged by change. We trust your presence. We trust your purpose. We trust your plan. And we trust your power. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Listen, I believe in this season, 
God needs you to understand you are not in this by yourself. Yes, things are changing and the world seems to be going crazy. Talk to God. Stay connected. Seek Him. Go after Him. See what God has to say. Tell Him how you feel. Tell Him what's going on. And watch you know how you feel His presence. How you get exposed to purpose, to His power, and to His plan. Listen, we love you. We, we're praying for you. We thank you. We want to pray for Brian, for Mike, for our college students, and all of our teachers, and those that are going away. We'll be doing um, that on our Monday morning call. We know that they leave this week, but we will emphasize that. Man, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I know you're going to do well. I'm so proud of you, baby. I know you're going to do well. Y'all don't forget it. That y'all represent God in, in this ministry. Now, we know you're going to do well. I'm so glad it's virtual. Because after y'all party all night, y'all get up 8.30 and come to church. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give God another praise and we prepare to go. Listen, before we go, we want to remind you that your life is full of favor. That you come on receive it. Your life is full of favor. That you have favor with both God and man. Your name has favor. Your family has favor. Your finances have favor. Listen, your health has favor. Your church has favor. You will experience the favor of God every day of your life. Hallelujah. Listen, God is making millionaires in this ministry. See, some of y'all can't receive that. Y'all were hesitant because the enemy has messed us up so much to tell us that money is, is evil. It's the love of money. God is raising up millionaires in this ministry. I feel this in the Holy Ghost. He is raising up millionaires in this ministry because there's a great work to be done. And he's raising up millionaires that he can trust. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I believe it in my soul and in my spirit that he's releasing it for his glory. Releasing it for his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, I hope it's, I hope I'm one of them. Lord, have mercy. I hope I'm one of them. You know what I would love to see? A Christian atmosphere, home, sin, people who are struggling with substance abuse can come and we have 24 hours around the clock prayer counseling restorative behavior plans put in place to help them be who God intended them to be. Because I believe that it has to be medicine and ministry. I feel God shifting this thing. It's going to happen. And it takes money to do it. I believe that we will be so blessed we will give houses away to single mothers, to families who are connected and grounded and trying to do right by God. I believe we will have a community of homes that we will, we will offer that even when 
when people come out of prison that we'll be able to get them on track, give them employment and a place to live. Y'all hear me? Because the church has to go beyond just the place of worship. It has to consume our whole life. The whole man, the whole woman. Listen, we got to go up. I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling this thing. God has just been dumping some things in my spirit. And I, Lord have mercy. We'll, we'll wrap it up next week. But I'm telling you, God is raising up some glory givers. What's glory givers? Those that he's going to do something in your life so magnificent and amazing that you can't do nothing, that we can't do nothing. We give God the glory. We got to go. Walk in victory. Come on, give God another praise in this place. Hallelujah. And amen. As we transition out, for those of us who are dealing with the challenge of change, I hear God saying that His grace is sufficient for you. His grace will keep you. He has not sent it to destroy, but to develop. His grace is sufficient for you. His grace is sufficient for you. His grace is sufficient. See, somebody need to catch that. His, but not your money. Not the opinions of people, but God's grace is sufficient for you. He'll keep you how you need to be kept. You got to trust God. Walk in victory, y'all. It belongs to us.